Baker Street. This particular building is about 106 years old. There are three floors. The top floor being spinning department, middle floor being that of carding, and the bottom floor was specialty. Specialty has been long since phased out. Now, also on this bottom floor is the nurses' department, as an urgent right here. Virginia Grant, the plant secretary, has her office here. And also behind her is Kevin Vickery and personnel manager, Gerald Curry. Of course, that's our logo, we saved you all. This part of the plant was built in 1967. This is the weave department. But also in the weave department, there is cloth inspection, stores, which is downstairs, and shipping. This building here is our main office. The accounting is here, payroll, the plant supervisor, the assistant plant supervisor, and also has the office of our plant manager, Mr. David Vaughan. As you can see at the present time, there's a truck parked right here which delivers our bale cotton. At one time, most of our bale cotton came in by train. But over the last 20 years, it was a mixture between the train and the truck. And eventually, the train no longer ran, and therefore, it was all delivered by truck. Now we'll go inside and see where they take it. and store it until ready for use. This is the view from the back of the truck. And as you can see, the trucks are well loaded with the cotton that comes here. We are now in the cotton warehouse. Mainly our cotton comes from the United States, but sometimes purchased from United, um, China, India, Africa, and also from Russia. Cotton bales weigh about 500 pounds. All yester bales are about 750. This elevator that you see before us is where these cotton bales are put on and delivered up to the blending area. Here the cotton bales are brought up here and allowed to stand to allow them to take on the room temperature and humidity. Because they're quite tight when they first brought in. Process taking a thin layer of the first 
three bales here. And you put it on the vending machine. By the time they're gone through it, there's like little nails on little racks on the side here, which break up all this cotton. It's a little tough. And by the time all the blending is done, and it reaches the other side, it's like a conveyor belt. You have 18 types of cotton mix.
we take you on a tour of the screening department, I would like to meet, let you meet the gentleman who runs the whole floor, Mr. Chester Poole. Chester, could you tell us how long you've worked with the media textiles? Uh, 13 years, Mr. Has most of that been spent in the screening department? Uh, I worked eight years in industrial engineering as an analyst, and I uh, left there, worked for two years in the weight room as a supervisor, and before coming here. I've been here two years. Do you know how many people are still left in the screening department? Roughly about 54 at present. 54. Could you tell us your feelings on how you felt when the, the announced closure was planned? Uh, quite emotional, really. Uh, I didn't really expect it. We were called to a meeting uh, early one morning, on the 17th of October. Uh, that's when we were given the bad news. Uh, I think you could have heard a pin drop in the room when, uh, when that news came about. Uh, that day, I uh, later on, I had to meet with all the people on the floor, if you remember, and pass that news on to them. Uh, it was quite hard and at times, when I think about it, it's a bit emotional. Do you have any plans to continue staying here, or you want to relocate? Uh, no, I'll stay locally. Uh, really, uh, as far as the textile field goes, it's not a lot out here right now. We have plans. So, no, I'll, I'll be staying locally here with the family. Hope we wish you all the luck, then. Thank you very much. Thank you.
gentlemen that take care of this floor. Mr. Robert Wells, but known to his employees as Robbie, takes care of winding. And Mark Stewart, my foreman, takes care of spinning. Could you tell me how long these fellas have been here? Well, Robbie? first, my name is Daryl. This is my other brother, Daryl, and Larry works in the office. Go ahead, Rob. Ten years I've been here. Mark? Uh, I think it's three going on 16. Quite a long time, huh? Have you enjoyed working on this floor? Well, I have no problem, except some people that work for me should be out working instead of taking pictures. 
Yeah, but you love it. Got any plans for when the mill closes? Who are you talking to? Mary or myself? Uh, yourself right now. Yeah, I'm gonna go away for a while. I'm gonna take some summer courses. Anything in particular, or are you keeping yeah, it a secret? I'm gonna go unemployment. Unemployment. Robbie, what about you? Nothing planned, definitely. Get two things going. I'll survive. we just showed you, they are all put onto this. And what they are doing, they are winding it directly onto a loom beam. Now we'll go around the front and show you the beam. This is the beam that all these ends can be wrapped onto and have it ready for the next process. A rough estimate for this machine, for the number of ends used, is in between 1,500 and 3,400. This machine is known as the Benetton. What we're viewing now is getting ready. Individual package selected. They're all put on these and getting ready. This is put on like a conveyor belt. When they're all ready, the conveyor belt will turn it and it'll automatically go on the inside, but on the other side. Whether it be hooked up, we put on to a bead. The end here, I'm threaded onto a drop wire. And they are threaded up onto a beam. Now, should an end break, a light at the top will automatically come on. This tells whoever's working the frame where the man has broke, what row. As she comes up to it, she is close enough that she can find it, repair it, and get the beam going again.
woven here in this department. What you see in now are the looms that it was woven on.
luxurious.
o'clock, Mary Street. What you're viewing now is the shipping department. And these are rolls that have come from the tenter and badger and ready to be shipped out. From here, they are taken by forklift and loaded into a truck. As you can see, there's a truck here presently, and it's now being loaded. This truck will be fully loaded before it leaves the plant. material that we're now viewing has all been inspected. But it's kept out here in the shipping department until it's ready to be wrapped. Now I'll introduce you to the department foreman of the weed department, Mr. Nick Sisko. Nick, could you tell us how long you've been with the Mini Textiles? I've been with the Mini Textiles for 12 years. Do you know how many employees you have on you at the time? Good question. <laughs> uh, I would say you've had approximately, uh, I would say approximately 80 employees. Uh, could you tell us what your main duties are here? My main duties? Yeah. Well, presently I'm taking the place of Bill Sisko, who went to another job as of last Friday. Uh, my main duty here right now are to make sure that the weaver runs fairly well until we actually close the door. Uh, my responsibilities would be to look after the ship supervisors, which I have six of, uh, employees on the floor, any concerns they have, uh, basically keep the quality of the cloth in good, good shape between now and then. And just the overall running of the department, make sure things run smooth. Have you made any plans now that you know the mill is closing? Yes, uh, I don't want to relocate out of Yarmouth. My intention is to stay in Yarmouth. Uh, I'm looking at basically going back to school in the fall. Uh, I'm glad to go to vocational school in Halifax to take a course in refrigeration. And uh, I'm presently Matter of fact, just last week finished a three-week course in refrigeration at the vocational school in Yarmouth. And my intention is to spend a year taking refrigeration and go along that aspect. Well, we wish you all the luck, and I thank you for your time. Thank you very much.
Now meet our department for an call from Mr. Roger Pittman. Roger, how long do you work with Dominion Textile? Uh, it will be 15 years in June. And what other departments have you worked in? Uh, I started back on the day I graduated from high school and working in the weave room as a room hand and uh, worked as a room hand for about three months and I became a weaver. And then I was accepted to Mohawk College and I attended Mohawk from 77 to 1980. And I started as a ship supervisor trainee in the, in the spinning department, spinning and winding. I worked in spinning and winding until 1982 and then I went to the card room for approximately a year and a half. And then I went back to the spinning and winding department. I worked on the B ship for three years and I worked on the weekend ship for a year. And I was transferred back to the card room for about eight months and I was in May of 1989 I became the department foreman in the cloth room. So I've been around just about everywhere except specialty. Otherwise you're pretty well covered the mill. Yes, I have. Have you had any plans now that you know the plan is closing? Well, my first intention was to return to school and take some sort of uh, trade in that regard, but uh, up till now, I haven't got a course that uh, I can take. Uh, also, I, well, this morning I was at unemployment looking to uh, sign some applications for, for other jobs, so I don't have anything concrete. I've, pretty much playing the field, hoping that something's going to turn up before uh, September. But I don't have anything concrete right now. So you're actually hoping to stay around Yarmouth rather than relocate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have two small children, and both sets of grandparents live within 20 minutes of Yarmouth. And, uh, it's important to me to make sure that my kids get to know their grandparents. It's a luxury that I never had. And really, that, that to me is more important than a good job finding it someplace else. So I, I prefer to stay in the Army if at all possible, but should uh, I have to make a move as a last resort, I will. But again, I, I would prefer to stay in the Army. Then I wish you all the luck in the world, Roger. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Now to introduce you to a great friend of mine, Mr. Jim McIntyre. Hi. Jim, what is your job here? Jim, I'm Jim McIntyre. I'm making of the Median Textile. Uh, what we're going to do within the next 15 or 20 minutes, I'll take you around the maintenance area. Underneath me, there's a maintenance supervisor who's Hugh Cunningham, and we have uh, 21 maintenance cells. These are broken down into uh, humidity, uh, electricians, machinists, boilermen, carpenters, welders, uh, plumbing. So I don't want to leave anyone out, but what we'll do is we'll make a tour of the areas, and I'll get some of the men in here. Okay. That's great. So Jim, how long, you, how long have you been here first? Oh, I've been here for 12 years now, originally from Montreal. I wasn't working for Dominion Textiles before. I was in the hotel business. And due to the political situation in Quebec, I decided I'd find another job in the Maritimes, and I'm enjoying it very much, and I hate to see the plant close because I think a lot of good friends here. So you still plan on staying in the Amateur? I'm looking for a All right. That's Chris Rose using the drill press in the garden shop. Over on the left, bearings and to do any electrical repairs required on production machinery plus uh, building maintenance and that could be from changing motors to uh, maintaining air wash at certain times of the day and uh, so on so it's a pretty active shop and without them a lot of the production machinery would come to an end shut down a lot of the fellows are leaving electricians going to the tin mine and so on like Earl Don Tremont and got Don outside Steve Jackard, who's approximately 18 years service, he's still with us, one of our older electricians. So if you want to leave here, Karen, what we'll do is we'll go into the machine shop and include you to some of the machines. All right. All right. I just need a little red light. Color. 
Here we are in the machine shop. We have uh, three electricians. They all work day shifts. Uh, some of the machinery you're seeing are lathes, milling machines. Down in the back, we have a shaper. Uh, fellow you will probably see just walking by down there. That's Chris Rolls. He's using a, a hacksaw. He's probably cutting a piece of machinery. Again, passing by, you see Ron LeFave, the carpenter. Uh, over on the left of these fellows, maybe you see him on the phone. That's Pat Eldridge. He's been here for approximately 20 years now. He just got his pin uh, last week for being here 20 years. He's a machinist. He's working the phone. What the area they're looking in there is the smoke room for the boilermen. They can sit because they're here 24 hours a day. So if you keep working your way around the machine shop, you'll probably come across two offices. Uh, in the office, on the right-hand office, you're just passing by. That's the uh, humidity man, Steve Dory. He takes care of all the humidity control, pneumatic control, electronic control for all production and building machinery. And to keep coming along, you'll see Hugh Cunningham, who has 30, I believe 34 years. Uh, he's the maintenance supervisor, and he's one of the oldest fellows. I think he's the original founder of the company, and he's on our seniority list for staff. He's got the seniority by all means. <laughs> I don't know if you got Steve, he's very shy. He's sitting in his office, but he won't take a look out this way. <laughs> he's our instrument controller. In fact, he just went for an interview yesterday, so he, he'll probably be staying around the area. He's gone up to the mine. A couple of the fellows have already gone up there. Steve. That's here. He's also got 20 years in the last year. He's the company. He's the latest on the machine. He manufactured parts for production okay here you find ourselves in the welding shop uh, Keith Durkee is our welder I don't see him around right now he could be up in one of the air washes welding but this is where all the welding is done in the plant. Again, he works a shift and he keeps pretty busy with the production people breaking a lot of the parts of the machinery, so we do a lot of welding here. He does aluminum welding, arc welding, acetylene. And over there we have a forge where we do all our hardening of gears or pulley. Again, a very active spot. Here we have one of those switches from above in the spinning area, coming down using our machinery, using a press. What he's probably going to do is knock the shaft off a pulley or something like this. I believe that press is three to four thousand pounds. I'm not sure of the actual figure, but a lot of the areas from production areas come down and use that press there. As you can see, he's setting it up in the press. We'll knock the the barely right off the shaft here by pressing it down. I believe it's from the open end machine upstairs on the third floor. What we'll probably do now, Karen, is... Okay. Okay, this is our boiler room. Again, this area of the plant is manned 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 12 months of the year. This is all our heating comes from. Uh, each boiler is good producing 7,500 pounds an hour, so we're taking this heating 15,000 pounds per hour. This uh, steam is used for heating in the winter, and in our slash this is one of the areas in the plant that receives a lot of gratitude for its cleaning. One of the property that the federal state pride in. As you can see, the black is coming in on the machine. That's the floor of the kept clean. These fellows are all licensed to uh, third class patients. Okay, where we are now is downstairs below the machine shop in the plumber shop. And our plumber is Paul Duncan, and he's been here for approximately 17 years. All the main controls have been here, I'd say, on the average of uh, 18 years. But Paul's main function of plumbing is to maintain the facilities. He also takes care of all the compressors because with production, uh, 
machinery a lot here is very important. So we need things to compress them because all the plumbing. Uh, there's quite a bit of old piping throughout the plant, so these kept very busy renewing and repairing leaks. What we'll, we'll do after we leave this uh, area, we'll go over to the refrigeration unit. Uh, most people in the plant never see it because during the summer months, when it's hot, we have to start up our refrigeration equipment. So I'll take you over there, Karen, and show you some of the refrigeration equipment we've got. Okay, that's fantastic. Come through, and this is one of the workers, and that's one of the workers. Kevin's just been with us for the last uh, couple of weeks. He's doing all the yard work outside. But as you see, the fellows usually uh, on Friday have a dinner and they'll cook up a dinner and we'll have a, a lunch together. But this is where most of the maintenance guys spend their time for their breaks. Okay, this is on our way over to the refrigeration room, so we'll see you over there. Okay, where we are now is down below the carpenter shop, and this is our main refrigeration plant. It's a 600 horsepower refrigeration unit. Thanks, Bob. You okay there looking at you? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, we just came back into maintenance and Keith is back in the welding shop. As I said, that's Keith Kirby uh, using the electric welding, arc welding to call it. Here's Phyllis Dowsett. Uh, she's yarn packing. What she's actually doing is you see putting yarn into cartons. This is called the sales yarn. A lot of yarn is 
made up on the third floor to ship down here. And what we'll do is we'll sell this yarn to different uh, customers. We can ship it to Magog, or I believe some have shipped down the other part of Nova Scotia to one of our other, plan, uh, not another plant, but another plant that uses our yarn. So this is called the sales yarn. This is where we pack it and put it in boxes. As you see, it's all. Anytime you're ready. The machine has a fresh use, it's called a uh, Basically what it does, it, uh, it'll take um, various products that we produce for each department, such as the sliver or, uh, or the yarns, and give us what we call a coefficient of variation. And all that is is just a, how, how even the yarn or, or sliver is. Herman is using, uh, using it for yarn. When we use yarn, we also get results for what we call infections, thin spots, thick spots, and hemp. The machine is used uh, to help us uh, maintain our quality and, and basically to safeguard against any, any uh, problems that might come up. Uh, on the machine, in the bottom, we have what we call spectrogram. spectrogram. Uh, what that will do for us after the, as the, the yarn or slider's gone through, and it, it'll uh, send us a graph. The graph will uh, tell us whether or not there's a problem in a certain area. Um, how it tells us about a series of peaks or, or things such as that. A peak is something that's uh, mechanically wrong with the machine. Hill is basically a, a drafting fault. You want to have a wolf, you have what we call it. Basically, that's what we call a peak. That means we have a fault in that particular area. These two calculations that have already been done, we can go back to the and say, that is wrong. Basically, that's either a front row over a cot or a bench. have here is a uh, called tensile machine. It's particular one's called the Instrong. What it does is basically is uh, give us the strength of whatever we might break. Uh, set up right now for the iron. We'll wrap the iron around on, on the jaws and pull it apart. The uh, results that we get in here take that, what we call load, and divide it by the actual size of what has been broke, and give us what we call an RPM, and that's used in our yarns, and just an indication of how strong uh, the RPM is. Also, we would use the machine for a tearing uh, cloth for various tests for, for, for our different uh, customers. Our major customer is uh, North and Braces, which is a lot of the hairs for them. And it's a machine that we use a great deal. It helps us maintain our quality in our yarn as well as our cloth. The machine we have here is a single end tester. Basically it does what you what the uh, end strong does or the tense off machine does, except it does it for single yarns. Um, Single yarn is uh, what we used to use it for is just to check our air splits as we wind it. When we first started, we didn't know how strong our, our splices were, so we decided to, to, to maintain a, a decent strength of so we uh, started using this machine. Basically, all it does is it, is tear, it, it uh, draws a graph as it breaks, it's down, down, yeah. and it'll draw a graph as it breaks. The, the, the uh, splice with the actual yarn to find out whether or not uh, it has an acceptable level of the percent, usually uh, 70, above 70 percent of the, the yarn strength would be what we would uh, look for. Uh, the machines next to it are, are what we call draw vendor ovens. Uh, what they're used for are for uh, moisture reading, uh, slash size, as well as uh, percent when. Moisture regain, basically all you do is you 
whatever material you put in there, you dry it until it becomes bone dry. The difference in weight is what we call moisture content. Uh, for a slash piece size, it's taken a, a step further. After it's dried, the uh, sample will be, uh, be boiled until the starch is gone and, and then re-dried. And again, from the calculations, we can tell which ones the starch is on. And in case of the blend test, we would be boiled in a, in a sorry, not boiled in an acid, but uh, put into an acid solution, whereas the cotton is chewed away. And again, after being bit dry, we can determine how much cotton and how much polyester is in our, uh, our yarns. introduce you to a gentleman I've known for quite some time, Mr. Kevin Poole. How are you, Kevin? Good. Okay. Good <laughs> How long have you been with Dominion Textiles? Karen, I, was, I came here in May of 78, so I've been here for 
13 years last month. And I can remember you from the spinning department. Where have you been since then? Spinning? Well, I started actually as a clerk in investment engineering. From there, I went to uh, carding as a ship foreman, and spinning as a ship foreman, and then back to carding as a department foreman, specialty department foreman, and now here as assistant superintendent. So I've been pretty well through the mill, I guess you could say. I can't. <laughs> How did you feel when you heard the plant was closing? Uh, well, I had mixed feelings. I guess, like most people, I knew it was coming the way the economy was in, the way the textiles are in Canada today. Still, it was quite a blow. As I mentioned earlier, I've, got, I've had quite a good career with many textiles up to this point. It was still a shock. Now I've got to go back to square one and start all over again. So, yeah, it had quite a so, are you going to stay in Yarmouth? Are you going to make plans to go away if necessary, or what? No, I hope to stay in Yarmouth. I'm from Yarmouth, and my family's from Yarmouth. And my wife and her family are from Yarmouth, and she has a good career going on right now, so I'm hoping to get any luck that I'll find. Now we'd like to introduce you to our plant manager, Mr. David Vaughn. Good morning, David. Good morning. Mr. Vaughn, could you tell us how long you've been with Dominion Textiles? I've been with Dominion Textiles 25 years. And how long has that been spent in the Yarmouth plant? Since uh, March 1977, so 14 years. And um, at one time, could you tell us how many employees to your knowledge have been employed at, you know, at the plant? Back in the mid-80s, uh, we would have had as high as 525 employees at the plant. So how many are employed at the present time? Approximately 300 at the present time. And about 40% would be let go June 28th? Yes, around 140 people. And the rest periodically. Periodically up to the middle of September. Could you tell us how you felt when you heard about the plant closing? Well, it certainly wasn't a pleasant thing to hear. It was uh, difficult to tell everyone about it, and uh, it was a difficult thing to hear. For sure. Now, do you have any plans for relocating or staying around here? I have no plans at the present time. None at the present time. None at the present time. Do you have any message for the people who have worked for you? Just to uh, thank them very much for all the years of service. And that has been a pleasure. Now I'd introduce you to a gentleman who's been a lot of help to me, Mr. Bob Earl. <laughs> Bob, I thank you for the tour you did me earlier. I thank you for calling me a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you've been given a lot of tours lately, haven't you? Oh, well, there's been a few, a few camera tours. People in the last days being interested for keepsakes. Is that your main job, taking around on tours here? No, my main job is uh, training supervisor. Uh, recently there hasn't been too much training going on, but uh, now in the last days we're closing out personnel files and so on. So the, the tours are still a sideline, they're not the, not the mainstay. So how long have you been with the Union Textile? Probably with the Union Textile 27 years in August. And how much of that has been spent at the Yarmouth plant? The Yarmouth plant? All of it. All of it. So well, I guess you're going to be sorry to see this close. Well, I'm not going to be very pleased, I can tell you. Now, are you going to relocate or you have plans to stay here? No, I'll be staying in the area. Do you have any jobs lined up at the present time? Not at the present time, no. Just seeing this one through to the end is my objective at the moment. But something great comes along. Well, I suppose, like all of us, we can only hope for the best, then. Yeah, we're hopeful people. Do you think there's any chance that maybe somebody would buy the mill before it closed? I've got no idea. None there's at no, all. No rumors, no talk, nothing. Well, I thank you for your time. Thank you. Now I'd introduce you to a gentleman who's not only got a great personality, but could almost start his own fan club here in the cotton mill, Mr. Gerald Purdy. He's our personnel manager. Gerald, how long have you been with the textile? Six years. And has all that been spent in Yarmouth? Yeah. So I guess you've seen a lot of people come through these doors. Good many. Good many. So do you have any plans for after the mill closes? We're, my family and I are going to stay local. Hopefully find something here. You don't have anything lined up at the present time then? No. No. Unfortunately. How did you feel when you first found out about the mill or did you expect it? Um, you never expect it. You kind of think it's in the background. It's been in the background for years. And, 
but when it did finally come, it was a shock, but not a surprise. The state of the business just hasn't been good. The indicators were, were showing, and they finally come home. So as personnel manager, what is your main job here? What do you do? I'm uh, in the responsibility of the hiring, the training, uh, firing, the discipline, the contract, uh, trying to be as much of a help to whoever I can, whenever I can. Well, I'm glad I had this opportunity to see you and meet you through all these years. Same here. Now I'd introduce you to a great friend of mine, Mr. Kevin Beckery. Kevin, you know? what is your job here? Well, they call me personnel supervisor. And what that means is there's a couple of areas that I take care of. One is the uh, safety program. I coordinate the safety program with, within the plant. And uh, from the personnel side of it, I do the uh, interviewing and uh, selection of new, new employees. So those are the two parts of, of my job. So how long have you been with me in textile? It was three years last week. Actually, it was not last week. It was three weeks yesterday. And has all that been spent right here in Yarmouth? Yep, right here in Yarmouth. So you've met a lot of people. I guess so. I know when I first came to the plant, I was thinking to myself, there's at that point 525 people. I'm going to have to remember a lot of names. I don't remember everybody's, but I know quite a few of them by now. Well, even if you don't remember names, you always remember oh, the faces. remember the faces, them. sure. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you feel when the plant announced its closure? Oh, it was sad, really, for everyone that works here, you know. Personally, I've had other jobs, and, you know, I, I'm probably lucky my wife is working steady, and uh, it's not going to affect me like it will some, but I, I think it's a sad day for the for the town and the people that work here. So you'll be staying in Yarmouth or relocating? I'm going to try. Going to try to stay here? Yeah. Do you have anything lined up at the present time? Not a thing, but I know that, uh, you know, there's a little bit of time to look yet, and uh, before the year's out, I hope to have something. If I can't find something, I'll have to make it. Now I'd introduce you to a great friend of mine, Mrs. Heather Nickerson. Heather, what is your job here? I'm a plant nurse. And what do you do besides give out strepsils and clown band-aids? <laughs> uh, well, I'm on the safety committee and uh, do a lot of hearing tests, um, visual screening, fire metric, which is a lung test, and cotton dust. Um, a lot of paperwork, workers' compensation claims, insurance claims, things like that. And how long have you been here at the Mini Textile? So how did you feel when you knew the plant was going to close? Pretty sad. I imagine. Do you have anything lined up? Not yet, no. Are you going to still stay in Yarmouth? Yes, I plan to. Are uh, you thought about going back to the Yarmouth Hospital? Uh, if something comes up there. Not too much going on there either. <laughs> so maybe we'll see you at the cotton mill picnic? I'm sure you will. And if not, we'll uh, all be together in the unemployment line, okay? Right. <laughs> I'm just going to tell Kevin Berkeley that's where we're going to meet. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, best of luck, Heather. Thanks, sir. Best of luck to you. Bye. Bye. Now, meet our secretary. Virginia, how you been? Fine, thanks. So, how long have you been working here? It'll be 15 years in August. And all of that's been spent here in Yarmouth? Yes, right here. In this office. I can remember coming up and getting our paychecks from you. <laughs> now they're being delivered upstairs. That's right. Well, there's not too many left that pick up checks. So what is your main job here besides just, you know, making up paychecks? I'm a real jack of all trades. I do a little bit of everything. I do the typing, I do the filing, I do a little bit of computer work. I act as a receptionist. Um, when Heather's not here, I have to be a... Uh, Nurse on call, just anything. anything Jack of all I'm three. To do, I do it. So how did you feel when they said the plant was closing? Had you expected it? Not quite so soon. I thought it might be coming, but not quite as soon as it did. I thought it might be four or five years down the road. And this is the the court jester over here. <laughs> So do you have any plans? I mean, are, uh, do you have anything lined I've up? I've put in some applications at different places and uh, just waiting to hear. So you still plan on staying in Yarmouth if possible? Now I'd introduce you to the Department of Foreman of Carding, Mr. Wayne Thiebaud. Wayne, how long have you been with the Maine Textile? Well, it'll be 20 years in January. Again. And how long has that been spent here in Yarmouth? Pardon me? How long have you been here in Yarmouth? The whole 20 years? Yeah, yeah I've never been anywhere else. Oh, so you've seen a lot of people come in this plant. A lot of people come and go. Have you held any other department? Seems to me I remember you from spinning. 
Jess, I was up there for about 19 months. Always going to get back here, though. You like it better on this floor? Oh, yeah. A lot better. So do you have any plans for when the mill closes? Everybody else is going to find some work somewhere. Not too much available, though. So you haven't anything lined up to go right into? No. Resume's out, but nothing, nothing back in the Well, were you surprised that the mill was closing, or had you expected it? Well, you know, rumors were in the air for probably a year or so, but uh, it's always a surprise when it comes down to that. Well, we wish you all the luck in the future then, Wayne. Same to you.